Hello, I'm Betty Swan, back with the show, Wisdom in the Night. I hope you're enjoying these lessons. I'm just having the best time teaching them to you, doing the research on them. It's amazing how people that lived thousands of years ago could go through the very same things we go through. It's amazing, but really it's not in a way, because people, as I've told you over and over in this show, human nature remains the same. We get in our messes, we tend to turn to the same things. For answers, we get in our victories, we tend to go to the things that will help us get victories, give credit to people. And today, we're going to talk about somebody I'm guessing you've never heard of. Even you people that are students of the Bible have never thought about this man. His name was Jehoiada. Do you know him? Do you know that he was a priest? He was a very brave man in an extremely scary time. Now, folks, we are in scary times in different parts of the earth today. Very scary. Many, many Christians are perishing just because of their faith. Many are losing their homes. They're losing their livelihood. They're being dispersed never to go back. And if there was somebody who had access to the ruling person of that country and stood up against them and made sure the right thing happened, how scary would it be? I think it'd be petrifying. I think about people that are true spies, the good kind of spy by their government. How scary is that? What, are you, what is a person like that? made of? What do they have that everybody else doesn't have? What kind of bravery do they have? What kind of nerves of steel do they have? What kind of quick thinking, quick acting attributes do they have? Because they have to have all of that. And as this world continues on its path of self-destruction, we see it happening. We see good things happening? Absolutely but we see bad things happening. And that's part of my world. I'm involved in working with refugees all over the world that have lost everything, especially refugees in Europe as they've come to Europe, trying to help them and help them get a new life for themselves and a good life and help them assimilate into the country in a productive way. But the people that work behind the scenes that none of us know about, they're doing very brave things. So today, this man, Jehoiada, I'm gonna tell you about him. Who was he? He was a priest that uh, in the time of Ahaziah, and you need to remember that name, he's a little bit, uh, have some value here in just a second or two. He had, uh, Ahaziah had a mother named Athaliah and she was very evil, very wicked, totally followed all of her ancestors that believed in witchcraft, believed in idol worship, believed in killing people and murdering babies and sacrificing babies. They were evil. And Athaliah uh, influenced this king in a great way. She trained him in evil trained him. Now think about it. I'm, I'm here to train you in goodness. She was there to train somebody in evil. And it goes on. I, if you're watching in other countries, and there's many, many countries watching this show, you bet you know exactly what I'm talking about. They were all related to Ahab. You remember Jezebel? You ever heard the name Jezebel? They were all related to that clan of people. And after his father died, after Ahaziah's father died, then he uh, had his mother have an even greater influence on him, and she got him killed. I mean, he was killed, and she became the queen, and she's the first woman to be the head of a nation in the Bible. 
today. We like to see women succeed. We like to see women advance. But this was an evil woman that's advanced. And I, I've actually been around people that were leaders in their country and some were women and they were not good women. It's still the same today. But she became ill and she was so determined to make sure that she had her fist controlling the throne and nobody was going to take it away from her. You know what she did? She had all of her grandchildren killed. Every one of them. Now I'm a grandmother. I love my grandchildren. Oh my goodness. I love them so much. I love to be with them. I love to train them in the things of the Lord. I love to pray with them. I love all of that. And this was a woman who wanted what she wanted so badly to be queen, to be in charge, to have everything be what she said it was to be. And she was wicked to begin with. She murdered all of her grandchildren. Now, what happened to one of those grandchildren? And this is where Jehoiada comes in. Look at this Bible verse. And uh, it says that there was no one, now look at this, there was no one in the house of Ahaziah powerful enough to retain it. So when she saw he was dead, she proceeded to destroy. Now look at this next verse that you're looking at right now. Jehosheba was the daughter of King Jehoram, and she took Joash, one of the children of Ahaziah that had just died, and she stole him away from among the royal princes who were about to be murdered and put him and his nurse in the bedroom. So he was very tiny child. Now, how scared do you think that was? How scared would you have been as a woman? We're talking about men and women who were extremely brave, took great risks, great chances, because they believed that the God of Israel wanted them to do it. And so they had great courage. It's just, I just admire all of that. Now, she, her husband was the priest, Jehoiada, and she was Ahaziah's sister. So do you kind of get the connection right there in the royal family? And she hid him and he remained hidden with them at the temple of God for six years. While Athaliah, the lady, it's hard to say these names. You ought to be here saying these names, ruled the land. He was hidden for six years. Now you think about this, a little child, maybe a baby, and hidden for six years from somebody who would have murdered him on the spot but was not able to find him. You know where he was? He was hidden in the house of God with the priest. And Athaliah wouldn't go near that place. I mean, she didn't want anything to do with God. So it turned out to be the perfect place. And someday when we all go to heaven, God's gonna let us see the Bible in like a movie. Or I don't know how he'll do it, but we're gonna get to see this situation and how all of the intrigue and all of the fear and all of the danger and all of the excitement and all of the bravery and all of the courage. And it's just gonna be like, we're living it right there, just like a good movie. But it really happened. It's not a movie, it really happened. And she was brave and her husband was brave. Now you have to think about why was he considered to be very brave and God's man because he was the priest. And the priest had such a high responsibility besides the king or the queen in this case, high responsibility. I remember uh, a time when I was going to the nation of Belarus. They had just come out from under communism about four years before and I went for eight years there, many times, many times. And one time someone said to me, the, the highest person in the Russian Orthodox faith, faith which is called the Metropolitan, uh, he has more power 
than the president of the country. Why? Because the people have been Russian Orthodox for centuries and the president's only there for however long he's there and then he's gone. So if the Russian Orthodox priest said or did things that had more power, more weight, well, this was a man just like that. He knew what he had to do. He knew if it cost him his life, but he also knew it didn't need to cost him his life. He did not need to die for it. He needed to be there and make sure this boy, Joash, was raised and raised right because the dynasty was so evil and all the children that came from it were evil. They just kept passing that down and passing that down and Jehoiada was God's man. And he was determined that a godly man would be raised up to be king. And so that's what he did. And, uh, and it happened. That's the good news. It happened. There's bravery that we never hear about. And then there's bravery we hear about. And we're amazed that somebody could take that kind of a dangerous stand. Now, even though you've never heard of him, have you ever heard of Queen Esther? And how she said, you've been raised for such a time as this, and if I perish, I perish. Well, Jehoda was kind of like that. He was kind of like a male Queen Esther, not in that she was gonna run the country, but he was gonna protect the man who was the child who was gonna run the country. And I'm sure he thought, I'm called for such a time as this. I thought maybe I was just called to be the, the priest, the high priest. Yes, that was a great honor, a great responsibility, but I have something assigned to me that's even bigger. And he, the promise, the reason this had to happen, God had made a promise to King David that there, somebody from his royal line would always sit on the throne and he would have died. There was a time that the Apostle Paul had left the great Jewish faith as a Pharisee and had become a true believer of Jesus Christ. And he said, you know, life is worth nothing unless I do it doing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. Do you think that way? I think that way. Following God is so wonderful. Doing the will of God is eternal. And you, it doesn't matter what God wants you to do because life is worth nothing unless you do it. Live it, doing the work assigned you by the Lord Jesus. And every one of us have assigned tasks. Actually, I'll give you a little piece of wisdom to go by. How do you know which one you go to, which one you do? Only do what only you can do. If someone else can do it, let them. Find that thing that only you can do. Hello, I'm Betty Swan, the woman who interviews people on the show. I want to tell you about something we're doing that you might want to be a part of. Feeding people with pennies and small change you find. The exchange rate makes them valuable. I saved $3.22, told my friends on social media, and they shared it. $215,000 has come in, 100% goes for food. We've fed people in 21 countries. Come help us. And here's a perfect example with Jehoiada. He was the only one who could save this child to be a godly representative down from David that God had promised he would do. Maybe he had the fear of God on him. Well, sure he did. You know what his name meant? His Jehoiada means Yahweh knows. God knows. And God knows. I'm telling you, God knows everything. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows if you just sat down and picked up something and drank some water or something, did you know God knew that right then? There's never a time in your life that God isn't watching everything you're doing, everything, good or bad. Even if you think you're sneaking around and nobody knows it, like right now, I believe there is like a teenager, a boy, 
and actually there's a teenage girl and you're both doing something you shouldn't be doing and you're sneaking around and you think you're getting away with it and God is watching every step you take. You're not going to get away with it. You need to just live right. Now, I'm going to read a Bible verse to you. In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehoah decided to act. Now, seven years he's waiting, planning. So he summoned his courage. Now, that's a key passage right there. How do you summon your courage? Well, you have to talk to yourself about how important this is. You have to talk to yourself about, is it worth doing? Summoning your courage. You have to say, I can do this with God's help. It's important. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be strong and I'm going to do it. And he summoned his courage and he made a pact with the army commanders. It's pretty hard. It's really hard to do anything with God that you don't have to have other people helping you. It, no man does it alone. It's impossible. Everybody has to do what they're, like I said, only do what only you can do. He had to have army people help him. And so he did. And he made five army people make a pact with him, secret pact. And they're named in the Bible and they traveled secretly. See, all of this is intrigue. You think the Bible and God is boring? Are you kidding me? Listen to this. It's as exciting as any TV show you're watching. So these men traveled secretly throughout Judah and summoned the Levites, who were the priests, and the clan leaders in all the towns to come to Jerusalem. Now you just think about that. Put yourself in that situation. You gotta find out, can we trust them? Can we trust the clan leaders? Can we trust the Levites? What if somebody tells? What if somebody exposes? Just great, great courage. Summoning this courage is a big deal. And they uh, gathered them all together at the temple and they made a solemn pact with Joash, the young king. Now he was only about eight years old. Just think about, it's kind of strange to think about it, isn't it? He, he ruled a long time, but he was eight years old. And Jehoiada said to them, and I'm sure he did it with a loud voice, here is the king's son. The time has come for him to reign. The Lord has promised that a descendant of David would be king. Don't you know he did all that? And a uh, lot of noise, a lot of cheering. He led a coup, folks. That's what he did. Now, some of you live in countries where coups go on. And you know what they're like. But. Athaliah was killed. The coup worked and he became king. The legitimate heir. She was not legitimate. He was a legitimate heir. When did this happen? For those of you that love to read the Bible and you got a Bible right there with you, it's in 2 Kings 11.4. Read about all of that. But he evidently was a, a king for a, a number of years in his role. Okay, let's look at that now. So, uh, so Jehoiada made this great uh, chant, way to save the future king, the right king. His wife was involved in it. They were hiding him. What was the result? Good or bad? Very good. Very good. His... Uh, he, he brought about a lot of good things. The young king, he influenced him to restore the temple, get church going again, what we would call church. And yet, what happened after Jehoiada died? Because there enough time passed and Jehoiada died. What happened after that? Just like what we see all the time. You know, people are inspired by the right head of the government, 
the right leader of the country and they live right and they're inspired by him. And the uh, person that has a lot of influence, like Billy Graham, had a lot of influence over the world and especially America, and he just died. And when that voice is gone, then you see it, you can see a decline because the leader is gone. Now, Joash, the king, always tried to please the Lord as long as he was alive. But after that, it, that's when things to begin to decline. And what do you do? What do you do uh, when the righteous person in your life is gone? What do you do? Do you have a grandmother that's righteous? Do you have a grandfather that's righteous? Righteous, a, a parent, an aunt, an uncle? And they inspire you, but when they die, you go back the way you shouldn't go. What's that all about? A lack of courage, a lack of determination in you, a lack of saying, it doesn't matter. They raised me right, they taught me right. I'm gonna stay the way with the Lord. I am not going the way of all the people around me. I am going to stay with the Lord. So I'm gonna go back over this with you one more time about the courage, summoned his courage. One, being willing to take a huge chance that he was doing something that could cost him his life if he was found. Obeying God, knowing he was pleasing God staying faithful in serving God. This high priest could have been there just for the name, just for the fame, just for the gain. No, he was there because through it all, he served God and he had courage and God could count on him. Can God count on you? Can God count on me? One time I prayed, Lord, I wanna be somebody I know you have things for me to do, but I want to be somebody that when you need a job done, you'll think, Betty will do it. If I ask Betty, Betty will do it. I want to be that kind of a person. I want to be considered that faithful that you could count on me. Now, Jehoiada lived to a very old age. It's actually hard to believe. He lived to 130, but he was buried with the kings. You know, God has his own way of honoring you he can uh, pick ways that cause people to realize, now who's this guy? Now what did he do? He is buried with kings and he's not a king, but God saw to it that he was honored. It was a great thing. He had done so much for God and so much for the temple. Now let's talk about you. Can it be said of you when you die he did so much for God, or she did so much for God. Don't you want that said? You know, folks, you don't have to be a king. You don't have to be a high priest to serve God in a big way. In fact, many times in the Bible, we never even heard of the person like Jehoiada but they did a big thing, and that's what you can do. You know the saying, uh, bloom where you're planted? It's true. Go where God has got you. In the New Testament, there's a book, Obadiah, and he was a slave that ran away from his owner. And the man of God said to him, go back, go back, and then wrote a letter to the owner and said, allow this man back. He served me, he's done a lot for me. Allow him back and he went back and was accepted and served God. You don't have to have the giant job, the important job. You can have what some people would consider a lowly job. I know a man who was a school janitor and he touched so many lives of students by being kind to them, by being a father figure to them, by showing them love, that they always remembered him. I know people that have been nurses in hospitals. 
I know people that have been caregivers in homes for people that are really old and are close to dying. And yet they were so godly and had such a sweet, good heart that people talked about them and made a point. I did that with the nurse that was around my stepmother. I said, could I just talk to you a second? I want to thank you for being so good to my stepmother in her last days. We all watched you. You were kind to her. You always came into the room friendly. And you, you just did something so wonderful in the very end of her days. So that's what I'm talking about, folks. Get your courage up. Get it up and, and be like Jehoiada. Don't worry about if you are known or not known or famous or not famous. When the time comes and God needs you, then you need to be ready. How do you get strong in God? One, you learn to trust God totally. And that is a learning process where you try God in small ways and big ways and you begin to see God is trustworthy. I can trust God. I can do this. I can, uh, I can step out. And then God will give you a bigger task and a bigger task and a bigger task. And I'm sure that's what happened with Jehoiada. He didn't start out doing this one extremely brave thing. It doesn't work like that. You go through lots of tests and uh, there's somebody watching right now. You're going through that test, aren't you? That are you brave? Are you courageous? Would you step out? Would you conquer your fear? Would you do what I'm telling you to do? You're watching this show right now. And I want to tell you from the Lord, He's going to help you. He's going to give you that courage. He's going to give you that knowledge and understanding that you need. And yes, there are evil people around you. And yes, they are very scary people because they have a lot of power. And you are afraid. But just realize this one thing. God is the one who gives you the power to do what He wants done. And if you will just turn to him with all of your heart and say, Lord, I'm going to do what you're calling me to do. I'm going to do it, Lord. Bless you for stepping out like this. God bless you. He's proud of you.